Welcome to Old Fashioned Finance, the podcast that mixes cocktails and high finance. I'm your host, Caleb Franker, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow money muddler, Jason Burnell. Caleb, can a podcast about finance be entertaining? Not without alcohol. All right, let's mix it up. Woohoo! You did that already. I did mix it up already. Yeah, How yeah. about that? I know. Man, I am ready for a drink. I am too. I'm ready to know. podcast because yeah. if you listen to our podcast weekly, you would say, yeah, okay, so they're on schedule. Yeah. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Podcast is out. Mm -hmm. But it's been almost two weeks since we recorded. And yeah. dang it, I miss recording. Yeah. Well, and it's been two weeks since I had a cocktail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Oh, I take that back. I did have one on Saturday. Whoops, I forgot. Well, I've had a few whiskey neats in between. Ooh, yeah. It, you know, the weather's nice, and I just, I don't know. I get them in late, and then I just forget. I don't know. I'm, anyway. I'm not going to spoil it because uh, I haven't tried this, but this seems like a good end of summer cocktail. It does. It does. Um, I'm excited. We, we're drinking, uh, well, let's, <laughs> <laughs> we've renamed this one because this is a family program it after is. all, even though we talk about cocktails. We um, found a cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we found a cinnamon for this. <laughs> Synonym. A cinnamon. We're drinking what we call a suffering rascal today. Yes. Um, there's a word that we're not going to say on the podcast right. because it is a family show and it's not, it's not like a horrible bad word, but. We're going to keep it PG. Yeah, okay? I mean, it's a word that starts with a B. And, and replaces, not the one you immediately think of. And replaces the word rascal. And I'll make, tell you what. Just look it up. Just yeah, look it if up. If you Google, Google that. <laughs> if, actually, if you Google the suffering rascal cocktail, the real thing will come up. It will. Yes. It will. So yes. uh, I tried it. So Good. Google Good. the suffer, suffering rascal. We're going to call it a rascal. We'll probably slip up at some point. <laughs> That's why someone edits our podcast for yeah. us. Woo. All right, so we're going to get into that. This thing looks great. It smells great. But, but why, why? Why are we drinking a suffering well, yeah. rascal? Well, you, you tell me, because this was your idea, it was. and I want you to run with it. Yeah, so, so you decided to retire, basically. Yeah. So now what? This is the D-Day moments. You're still suffering. You're still a suffering rascal. You've been suffering for 30-plus years. Exactly, and, but now you're ready to pull the plug. Yeah. And that's awesome. So there was an episode that we did quite a while. Well, I say quite a while ago, maybe six months, maybe yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, it was one of our retirement rum time episodes. Yeah. Five things you must do before you retire. This kind of goes right along with that. Uh, that episode, I guess the spirit of it was, and there might be a little bit of overlap here, but it was really, all right, so what are the things that you need to knock out before you're ready to say, okay, I'm good to go. I'm going to retire. Well, we've done that stuff. Right. And now we're at that point, like you said, D-Day. We're retiring. Right. Right. You still have work to do. That's right. There are still things that you got to take yeah, care and, of. And I think in like some of our more recent meetings, this stuff has come up. Definitely. And actually has created a few like snags in, you know, timelines. Mm -hmm. And so not, not because anyone like didn't like do their homework or anything. It's just because you run into problems with Absolutely. some of this stuff sometimes. So. This is, I think, very practical if you're at that retirement end zone. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's funny you say end zone because I just met with a couple last night, very delightful couple. And, you know, he basically, yes. a prospect, mm -hmm. said, Look, here's the deal. I've, since I talked to you last, I put a date on it. I want to retire by 65. Yeah. He just turned 59. I go, Great. You have just entered what, what I call the retirement red zone. Yes. This is after the red zone. This is the end zone, yeah. right? Yeah. You're, this is you're, kicking the extra point or going for two. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's football season. <laughs> it is for sure. <laughs> As of last night. Uh, can we well, drink? We can. But I guess just stop talking. I want to set up. If, if you're if you have come to that conclusion that you are going to retire, <laughs> you've set a date or whatever. Oops. Uh, <laughs> this is the retirement checklist episode, right? Yes. So get out the pad and pen. Here's your homework. But first. Let's drink. <laughs> yes. So the suffering <clears throat> rascal. rascal. <laughs> what are we drinking Oops. today, Jason? All right. So the, the suffering rascal, you know, when we looked at the ingredients, we go, yeah, why not? Why haven't we done this? <laughs> well, I'd never heard of it before. This has got kind of a fun history, too. So I'm going to share a little bit. But what we are drinking today is comprised of one ounce of bourbon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> one ounce of gin. Yes. All right. Stop me whenever we, we hit something you don't like. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. A half an ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Not lemon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two dashes of Angostura bitters. Also. Ginger beer to top. 
I yeah yeah garnish with a mint sprig Ooh. I'm all in on this Ooh. this sounds like a good drink it was fun mixing it it looks really cool. it does look really cool so what you it basically like want to do yeah it, yeah it does look like a champagne cocktail and that's that you know the the floating of the ginger beer so this one you can't just throw it all in a shaker and mix it up because we we do ginger beer to top right so yes. you put the bourbon gin lime juice and bitters into a shaker shake it up with some ice and then with a Tom Collins or a Collins glass, whatever. Not Tom Collins. That's another <laughs> drink. Fill that with ice. Strain the drink into the ice and then and then fill it to, to your heart's desire. Right. With, with ginger, ginger beer. beer. Yeah. And so I used Fever Tree this time around. We use Q brand a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of that. And they came in like 8.6 ounce bottles, which mm-hmm. is a really weird size. But it, guess it, what? It was perfect, perfect for these glasses oh, we're using. These are kind of big glasses. And it felt like the right amount whenever yeah. I topped it, Jason. Sweet. It just felt right. That's so, good. Um, it's all about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a sip, and then uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit of fun history before right, we jump in the finance go. topic. Cheers. That's good. Oh. That's good. That's really good. That's definitely a ginger, a different ginger beer than what we use Not normally. as spicy as a lot of the ginger beers. But not as have. sweet as the no. other one that we used. No. That's a good in-between. I like that, Jason. Mm. That's pretty good. And it looks pretty with the mint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. I like it. That's really it's really good. good. It's really good. I can taste everything. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, the bourbon doesn't hide in the back. Uh, Which the a lot of times when you mix, back. mix bourbon in a cocktail, you, you just lose it. Yeah. And, you know, I, we don't do a ton of these drinks where we float something on top, yeah. you know, like the Tom Collins or. Right. We did that one with Benedictine on top. That was what was that? Uh, yeah, but we didn't float like a soda water. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A lot of times that dilutes it. This is not, this is the right proportion. Oh, this man, is one I'd good. never heard of Jason, but it's been around a while. So I know we used to go way into history and I'm not going to go into that, but legend has it Ooh. that this was a cocktail that was invented around 1942, um, by a barkeeper named Joe. I can't say his last name. Skylom. Yeah. We'll this was supposed it. to be a hangover remedy for Ooh. troops during world war two. With more gin and bourbon. <laughs> well, isn't that funny? A little hair of the dog, right? Yeah. So he settled on the suffering <clears throat> rascal. rascal. <laughs> Man, I almost said it. The controversy here with this one was that maybe it wasn't initially a whiskey drink, but mm-hmm. brandy instead. By all accounts, the brandy concoction is also very good. And I, I would imagine that would be pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it would be. But I'm always a fan of, of bourbon, right? So uh, he settled on this mixture, okay? putting the two liquors, lime juice, the bitters in there, and ginger beer because of the stomach settling properties of which, the ginger beer, which I, makes sense. I get sense. that. I get that. Yeah. So it was supposedly so popular with the troops that they would telegram the hotel asking for bulk orders of this. <laughs> All right. To the point where it was not a hangover cure, now it was starting its own hangover. Nice. Okay? Nice. <laughs> so, the story yeah. of any good cocktail. <laughs> it, you, you got it. And what's funny is, as we've looked at other cocktails, that there's there's been some movements over time that have kind of you know taken some of these classics and maybe thrown a little uh, shadow or cast a shadow over them. This one fell victim to the tiki movement in the 60s. Mm. And so it became one where, you know, they'd trade out the base spirits for rum, threw some orange liqueur in there, some orgeat, kind of like a Mai Tai. Yeah, now right? we got a Mai Tai, yeah. And so it, it, you can see pretty soon it becomes a completely different cocktail. Right. right? So, uh, but anyway, going back to the original, it was either whiskey or brandy. And huh. we went with whiskey. This is this is good. Yeah. Man, this is really this refreshing. This is a repeater for sure. And it's easy. Yeah. It's Let's easy. not forget, there's too many cocktails we try on this this podcast and we go, that's good. I'm going to make that again. And then we never do it. We don't. I know. This one we would definitely do again. I I like it. I like it. It's a a great wrap-up for summer. Absolutely. Well, Jason, this is a finance podcast, too. So what do you say we get into the finance topic? Yeah, since you're no longer suffering, your suffering will soon come to an end. Maybe this will cure the 30 years of work hangover. Oh, I like you might need to. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, it's basically so you've determined you're going to retire. Yeah, it's like, done. It's time. You got green lights all around. So yep. you've hopefully talked with your financial advisor. Yep. Everybody's agreed. You can retire. It's a good time. Let's let's move. Right. Let's yeah. Do I mean, this. so, you know, here we go. Like the, the very first thing that I think our clients and most folks struggle with 
is get your pad and paper out. This is the checklist. Number folks. one, you got to set a date. Well, that sounds obvious, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> this is a lot harder than yeah. people think. Why is that, Jason? I, you know what? It is like signing your name on the line. Uh -huh. And you know what's funny is like, I've told folks like, well, if you get to the date and you decide, or you're like a month away from the date and you decide you don't want to retire, mm -hmm. change the date. Okay. And, but that's not how we think. But you don't walk into your employer and go, you know what? I've decided to retire. Today will be my Goodbye. last day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, be courteous. I mean, most folks are given at least two weeks or longer. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel like they're not you know, probably doing the right steps to replace you and all your knowledge, get over it. You're going to be gone. Yeah. So if you're waiting around for your replacement to show up, you may be waiting. For you're waiting. Okay. I mean, unfortunately, sometimes they have to realize that you're actually leaving, set the date. Okay. Now, one of my biggest points of advice here is don't do it in the middle of winter. Okay. This is an emotional decision mm. and it's a lot more emotional. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, especially gonna, here in the Midwest. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to point it out to guys. Okay. Men especially struggle when it's like January one, I'm done. I'm done. January one. Uh huh. And then they retire to the lazy boy mm. and they never get out of it again. Okay. We talk about this all the time. Yep. Yeah. And, and really I I've seen in my career, the decade that I've been doing this, which is not all that long in the grand scheme of things. But I've seen people's mentality, which is, I think is a good thing, their mentality about what retirement means shift entirely. Yep. I've probably said this on the podcast before, but when I got started in this business and folks came to me and said, I want to retire, uh -huh. what do we need to do? The first thing I say is, what are we going to do? Right. What are we going to do, right? And that answer really early on, and you know, you, I'm sure it was the same thing for you, we heard a lot of, I'm going to go golfing. Oh, okay, then what? That's it. I'm going to go golfing. Or mm. I'm going to go fishing. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what? That's it. I'm going to go fishing. No. Uh, you know, there. I guess there was a generation that could do that. Right. But I think you pretty quickly find that you got to have some kind of purpose, right? Right. And when you retire to the lazy boy in the winter when there are not a whole lot of other options, yeah, you, you really probably start to regret your decision or at least question it. Well, early if on. you are developing a new pile of worry from being at home, watching the news, doing mm. all that, that's just bad. That's a great so, point. So retire in the summer if you can. Mm -hmm. If you do have to retire in the winter or you really want to schedule a fun event like right away, like maybe it is a retirement party. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a retirement trip. Maybe it's going to spend time with your grandkids for a long two time. or three yeah. weeks, you know? Cool. You cannot just retire and expect and, the winter to be great. And we would say this to anybody at any point in time. Make sure you've got something to keep you busy. And, and I, I would say you would probably agree with this, right? Most of our clients don't have any trouble staying busy in retirement. No, no. But there, there are some who, you know, maybe you went and you punched the clock for 30 mm -hmm. years and work was all you knew. And you, you kind of, you struggle with your purpose whenever you retire, you right? You just took your identity away. Yeah. And, it's a huge, and like you said, especially for men. Especially for men. I we mean, find our identity in our work. I think when we're born, yeah, you're downloaded with that, you know, like mm -hmm. sense of responsibility, at least some of us are. And <laughs> <laughs> so we hope as we are. drink a drink during our work day. <laughs> but, and, and the last point on this is make sure your spouse is on board. Always. <laughs> okay. Like that. Yeah. Is, like Tom Brady I, and Giselle, right? Right. Exactly. You know what's going on right, there, don't you? Right. Exactly. So like here, <laughs> I know it seems obvious, but you know, especially men, sometimes we're not the best communicators. You know what, Jason? That is, that's great with what's like the headlines this week. Tom Brady retired from football at 45 right. years young. His wife was all about it. You know, they, they seemingly have this perfect life, right? You've got a a guy who's played football for over 20 years, won a ton of championships, made a lot of money. They've got beautiful children. He, he married a model <laughs> who makes more money than he does. I know. Right? And he retires and a month later goes, I can't do it. I'm coming back. Right? She's not happy. No. <laughs> so, Tom, if you're listening, yes. make sure your wife is on Talk board. Talk to your wife for the love of Pete. In this case, you know, you, what you might find out is your spouse says, yeah, like five years ago, let's right. do this, right? Well, and don't have your agent talk to your wife. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Not that our clients have agents. Okay, so 
All not, right. So not the, next, yet. <laughs> the next point, number two, is understand where your flipping money is at. Yeah. Another one that sounds really obvious, All right? but not. No. So let's say back in you know 1974, you had a job and you had a pension and you worked there for 10 years. Uh-huh. You've got to track this stuff down now. Yeah. Um, they send you an annual statement. You remember getting it. You threw it in the drawer and then you forgot about it and went to work. It's time to gather all that stuff around. There's nobody out there that's making sure that this is all coordinated for you. In fact, they would love for you to forget about it entirely. Absolutely. And just plain old die and never collect. And that's a problem. You know, one I think about a lot actually is people who coach like high school sports for a long time or not even a long time. Some sometimes, you know, maybe they coach for three or four years and they've got some Public Some employee public pension got or it. Yeah. teacher retirement or something. People forget about them all the time. Yeah, if you're a township trustee in our town, like, you yeah. know, here you go. You got some uh, public employee stuff. Okay, so that seems obvious. Gather all your statements. Yeah. All right. The next thing, point Which, 2.1, because I forgot about point two. Okay. <laughs> 2.1, get all your logins <laughs> ready. Now, okay. this isn't as easy as... You're not talking about, well, okay, we're gathering all of our statements. I guess it could fall into this category, right? It is. But it's the same category. But we're there's a little bit more to this login thing. That's right. Don't assume you're going to sit down and everything's going to be peachy keen mm-hmm. and you're off to the races and you're going to get everything applied for in one sitting. It's not going to work that way. So when you say applied for, we're talking about social security here. Or pensions. Right? Or pension. Right. Yep. So, so Social security is a big one that's actually changed even within the last year. Correct. And so login.gov is our new worst enemy. Okay. <laughs> it's become a way for the government type to... Get your identity understood. There's several verification ways, but you might get the uh, verification code of death, mm. which is the one that comes in the U.S. mail, oh. and it takes a week and or longer. It, my point is, is if you set the date and you know it's coming, get your Social Security login now. Yeah, do this okay? now. Right. right. And really, you can apply for Social Security benefits 90 days. Yep. Okay, ahead of your actual retirement date. So, so practically speaking, Jason, right? You, uh, you, you don't think about this. The login.gov. This was something that I think. Well, at least I'll, I'll show my ignorance here. It's something that is has recently changed. I'm going. I, you, you brought it up the other day. I go, what are you talking about? Login.gov. Right. Right. So this is how this can practically affect you. I retire. I'm good with my employer, and I know what I want to do as far as social security benefits go. But this is a really good way to end up you know, collecting benefits a month later than you've planned or right? longer yeah, or longer. So, you know, the reality is, is get ahead of that, have your login, know that it works, have it in a safe location, understand how to get into social security. Cause that application process is on the social security website yeah. for social security right. benefits and Medicare here in Ohio. At least you're not walking into the social security office to do this anymore. Right. And you officially cannot get signed up for Medicare with supplement Mm -hmm. okay or an advantage plan without your medicare number which is on the social security website yep okay so that's that's really important pensions one thing i want to mention that we often forget about spousal consent oh big one okay spousal consent is listen you're married to your spouse and they have a right to some of this money if you have a pension Mm -hmm. they have to consent for whatever benefit you choose. Right. If it's a single life, that means you don't care about your spouse at all and you're just going to take all the money. Now, it doesn't always mean that. But it but might. It could. <laughs> Odds are. Um, that's, that's why this rule exists. That's why this rule exists. <laughs> and they have to sign and have it notarized. And a lot of times, that's a wet signature that has right. to be sent into the pension provider. Yep. Don't underestimate the timetable that that actually requires. So, and your 401k. You uh-huh. better know how that process works. Be able to see the statements online. Um, most good advisors understand the major guys, you know, the Fidelities, the right. T-Rows, you know, those principles of the world that have a lot of 401k plans, how their process works. Yes. It's not always in- as intuitive as you would think. Well, I, here's one where I'll say uh, Social Security's maybe gotten a little bit more difficult. Um, pensions, yeah, I don't know, I, ab- about expected i guess but i will say about 401ks especially with the big the big boys the fidelities of the world the uh, what's the other one that we log into the other day principal yeah Yeah. uh these are getting easier yeah american funds was one i I did the other day all online yeah as long as you have a username and a password for the most part 
uh, the rollover process now you come into the office we'll log in with you and we're done in five ten minutes so as long as you have as a username as, and password and that, that is the key jason because similar to how login.gov might work every plan is a little bit different and yes. the requirements there are some that you can pick up the phone and say hi i'm sitting here with so-and-so we're retiring great we need to roll over the funds okay where do you want it sent and it's as easy as that but then others are, do you have your pen? No. Well, we're going to have to send that to you. Right. Right. And two weeks later, maybe you get it. Right. What maybe was you your, don't. What maybe. was your grandmother's sister's aunt's once removed first car? First car. <laughs> license plate number. Right. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. And yeah. sometimes it goes that way. So the sooner you get this done, the easier it will be. Mm-hmm. And just put up with the frustration. The frustration of your job is going to go away soon. Right. So you'll have plenty of time to recover from this. So what's number three on the checklist, Jason? Number three is you got to get some understanding of how your income is going to look. I know this sounds really generic, but we're we're done. We set a date. Yeah. My social security income is going to come in. Okay. That's one. Your pension. My pension income. If I have a pension. Yeah, right. But what's happening, a lot of folks are retiring and they're like, I saved in this 401k. How do I use it? Right. Well, okay. and we, we see two polar opposites. We usually don't see anybody right in the middle, do we, Jason? Almost we, never. We, we right. either get, I've saved this money. It's got to last me through retirement. Therefore, I'm going to take 0.3% out every year. Is that okay? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, would you like to spend more money? And then we have the other side who says, yeah, I saved this money for income and retirement. Therefore, out of my $500,000 401k, I want to take 50 grand a year out of. No, that's not going to work. Not going to work. <laughs> not a, yeah. So yeah, if you're the person that's going to buy like day old bread all the time and just be you know super conservative, it's a lot easier. But the so reality, how do we know, Jason? Right? right. So there are lots of theories around this. Okay. We have our own distribution method and how we distribute money. We have some guardrails. We set limits. You need to understand that. Okay. Now, one of the things that I talk to clients about, talk to them about income specifically in retirement is when you're working, you maximize income, Mm -hmm. you go out, you kill it, you drag it home, you (laughs) eat a big dinner, you maximize your income, you make as much as you can. Yep. You know, who cares what the tax brackets are? You're making as much as you possibly can. Now you're retired. You did the savings. Yep. Good job. You got the green light. You, you already hunted and killed. You killed it. Let's see what you, you got put in, the it in the freezer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so here we are. Our Midwestern like, yeah. values are coming out. So you, you killed it. You drug it home. It's saved. You need to optimize your income. Yeah. That is a bad word, I think. But eh, it's a very insurancey sounding word, Jason. But it I know. is the right word. Like, it How is. much income do well, you need? Well, it's not need? as bad as maximize, which you have up here. On the- I know. <laughs> did I spoil that? I'm you sorry. You did, yeah. <laughs> so like, how much income do you actually need? Yeah. Okay, my bills on a regular month-to-month basis are 3500 bucks. Great. That's what you need. That doesn't mean I used to make 6000 I need 6000 a month. Right, right. Okay? Because if all you're going to do is take your own savings and turn around and put it in your savings account, that's <laughs> stupid. Yes. And we see that. And we see that. So optimize your income. Yeah. This is the plug the hole mentality, right? And it's really simple. This is a yellow pad financial plan. It's it's what I call it. You know, when when we say, well, how do we optimize our income? Well, I don't know. What do we need to live off of? That's basic budgeting, right? Okay. Minus your social security. That's right. Minus your pension. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's left over? How much pressure do I have to put on these assets? And that's where we'll have that conversation and go, Hey, yeah, you know what? That works. In fact, I'm going to say you could probably take $250 a month more. Or I might say, ooh, that hole that we got to fill is a little bit bigger than what we thought. So you what know, we like to do is we like to look at your total assets. We apply some factors to it. And then we look at guardrails, make sure we're not falling off the cliff mm-hmm. when it comes to you know market conditions and the amount of income you're taking. So, well, and, and this is where people get a lot of outside input and you hear a lot of the financial uh, what's the word that I, I, I guess you could say rules head trash thumb. a little bit rules yeah. of thumb. Yeah. You know, the, the retirement industry and I'll say slash insurance, insurance industry, industry. Yeah. <laughs> kind of coined this 5% rule years and years and years ago, right? right? Well, if you just live off of 5% of your assets, they should still grow. You should never run out of money. You'll be okay. 
Well, and then returns, and I say like fixed returns, right? Fixed sure. rates come down over yeah, time. Yeah, the old bond portfolio. Right, oh, bond yeah. yields come down. Then it became the 4% rule, right? Jason, I've heard as low as 2.8%. Now, I understand the, the methodology. I understand the thinking, right? Where you go, well, you know, bond yields are lower. Fixed rates are lower. You, you got to bring that down. Except for when the market goes up 21%, I'm going, why can't I take five? Right. Exactly. Why, exactly. why can't I take five? Right. So, so there's lots of rules of thumb here. There's lots of different uh, avenues to go down when it comes to how your income is used. But what I find, at least in our area, is folks are much more comfortable with knowing that their month to month's taken care of. They come in, they dip in for larger expenses into their savings. As long as we're within a guardrail, it's pretty good. And, you know, so they want to go to Alaska. They spend 10,000 bucks. They come and get 10 grand out. Okay, they're good. They didn't mm -hmm. have to save. They did the saving. Right. The saving's done. So I think that that optimizing thinking is a big shift, especially when you've worked your tail off all your life and saved so hard. Um, you've done that part. Can I can I add 3.1 before we move on to sure. 4, Jason? Yeah. And this is something that I've I've done with folks because look, regardless, when you retire, it's going to be a change in in thinking. Yep. It, it's going to be a change that's shocking to the system. And I tell everybody, give it six months before you you come back with this is working or it's not. Right. Here's a great thing you can do leading up. You've set the date. You've got your logins. You've talked about where you you know this. So this is after you've optimized your income plan, right? practice it before you retire, right? Great concept. Yeah. If we're going to live off of X, even though we're making a little bit more money for the next few months, why don't we put it into practice and see if it's going to practically work, mm -hmm. right? While we have the the buffer there with right. our income, right? And, and this way you can see if there are any adjustments that need to be made before you actually need to make the adjustment. And yeah. And that's a good point. Like a little extra in your emergency funds, not yeah. the dumbest thing either. So yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So point four, point four, you're keeping score. Point four, talk to your advisor. And hopefully you've been doing this all along. Goodness <laughs> the whole way. gracious. Like, don't keep this a secret. I mean, this is something that you should be getting help with. And if you have an advisor, they should be wildly engaged in this. Yes, the whole way. Through all of these steps, you should be talking to your advisor. And I look at this, and I know you kind of laid this out, and you and I might look at it slightly differently. This is this is through every step. Talk to your advisor every step of the way, the Correct. whole way, and not just that doesn't stop when you retire. Then either, right? right? Like, hey, thanks for your help. Now I'm on my own, and I'll see you at my next year annual review. Right? No, I had someone who came in yesterday. Actually, we helped her retire in January. Mm -hmm. We did all of this stuff, right? And I've checked in a couple times. Hey, how are things going? Well, I, I saw her the other day and I said, we really need to get together. She goes, I know I've been really busy. I'm going to pop in next week. Let's get a time on the calendar. And, and then as she's walking away, she goes, I'm going back to work, but I'll tell you about it next week. I go, what? <laughs> There's a lot of reasons for it. One reason was she was bored. She missed the human interaction. I get that. And, you know, making a little bit of extra money going back to work because she wants to, not because she has to. She's right. going to be very part-time. But some of it was, even though we laid all this stuff out, I didn't realize that time at home not working, I was going to be spending extra money because of the boredom factor. Yeah. yeah. So again, None talking to your to advisor, money. Yeah. right? <laughs> talking and communicating all this stuff, we're not going to let you uh, retire and then set you on an island until next year. Right. Right. Keep the communication. Well, lines and if that's open. happening, then you should be considering a change, and that's just that's just reality. So. Man, this was good. I think it was good. The this drink, drink was, was good. Oh, man, I'm going to have another one. For <laughs> the topic sure. was good. This is really, really practical stuff, Jason. Even, I mean, if you are at that point, super practical. But if you're coming up on the, if you're in the red zone and you want to know how to punch it in, <laughs> right, <laughs> then this is good stuff. So, uh, well, thanks for having a drink with us this week, folks. It is time to close out that tab. If you have a question or a topic you want to address on the Old Fashioned Finance Podcast, be sure to email us at podcast at bluejfg.com. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to share the show with someone you love or just someone who needs a little money muddling themselves. You can stay up to date with the latest action by following us on Facebook. Old Fashioned Finance is brought to you by Blue Jay Financial Group. That's bluejfg.com and produced by Pottery Studios. We've been your hosts, Caleb and Jason. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. Hey, good job. You didn't say bastard the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. There you did it. <laughs> <laughs>
Blue Jay Financial Group, LLC. Blue Jay is a registered investment advisor registered with the state of Ohio. Registration does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The presence of this advertisement on this podcast shall not be directly or indirectly interpreted as a solicitation of investment advisory services to persons of another jurisdiction unless otherwise permitted by statute. Follow-up or individualized responses to a consumer in a particular state by Blue Jay and the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation shall not be made without first complying with jurisdiction requirements or pursuant an applicable state exemption. All verbal and written consent on this presentation is for information purposes only. Opinions expressed herein are solely those of Blue Jay unless other otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to other parties' informational accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with an advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation.